Well, I'd say a good snake, yeah. It is an iconic species. Definitely one of the prettiest snakes in the region. I'm so Did that just bite you in the face? All right, in the back of David's car right now, heading even further south, but uh, the swelling in my hand has gone down even more now, so uh, we'll be able to get a good night in. This place is pretty exciting, and I'll uh, check in with you when we get there. All right, so literally just a minute or so in, Cass spotted our first snake, and it is the first adult Buiga cyanea I've ever seen at this spot. Uh, and that's a first for the channel as well. We did find one in one of my earlier videos I filmed, but that one's not going on YouTube. But quite a, quite a grayish one. This one has obviously only recently transitioned to green. So it's still, it's still in a kind of almost grayish green phase. But uh, yeah, here's a nice look at a very cool species. But we got a great family of snakes, an awesome family to get up close with. You see those stardust speckled eyes yeah good start to the night very quick we're out here in a bit of drizzle things are looking up all right Cass is on a roll tonight she just spotted our second snake and it's actually a really pretty uh a hatiella fasciolata now this is the fourth and final of uh, thailand's vine snakes that i had to show on the channel and by far the rarest i wouldn't say it's rare in this area but generally across its range it doesn't show up too often and it, well, it is definitely the rarest, but it is a hay tiller, so they're easy to see. Okay, so we took it out for David to film some video of, and it puffed up its body and it really just completely changed. I mean, we already knew it was interesting, but just look at the yellows it has throughout the body. Did that just bite you in the face? <laughs> On the lip. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> I can't believe that shit. I thought I was done with snake bites for the meantime, but apparently not, we're right back at it. But yeah, this one's actually incredible. I've never seen an Ahetula fasciolata like that. And I've actually seen maybe like 15, 16 of these in my time. So got to get some pictures of this. Stunning. Not even 20 seconds after we released the Ahetula fasciolata, David spotted our third snake of the night within about, what, seven minutes of walking maybe? Yeah. And it is a, a new species for the channel. But this is actually Parius carinatus, subject to a recent split. And this one is very, very orange. I'm not sure exactly how you tell these apart. I just know that the ones from Southern Thailand are true Carinatus. And of course, these are ever cute, ever harmless, never biting. So I'm not going to do much more video with these because I'm sure we'll see more in our time here on the channel. Okay, this very squirmy snake in David's hands is one of the most slender species we get here in Thailand. This is Drapezius cat snake, the white spotted cat snake, Boiga drapezii, and uh, it's an absolutely huge one. This is quite cool to show on the channel. It may not be so exciting for David because while I was in hospital last night, he went out and caught one of these here. But this is actually the first one I've ever seen at this particular spot, and one of the Boiga species I've actually seen the least of in Thailand. Benkuluensis, which used to be somewhat synonymous with this in people's opinion, I've seen many, many, many times, but I think I've only seen this species four maybe five times total in Asia and I haven't seen one myself in the wild since 2015 so spotting this one is quite cool and just it may not seem that big but stretch it out David like this is if it's stretched out it's almost as long as David is tall so that's like 180 something but yeah um we're really racking up the numbers it hasn't even been like in terms of our total walking time I don't think we've even been 15 minutes but uh, yeah, very, very cool, but let's keep herping. Any guesses on what David's doing up this tree? He is catching our fifth snake in less than 30 minutes and our third Boiga species of the night. Um, what I spotted at the top of this tree is, it's up there, David. Can you see it? No. It's on the right-hand side. All right. Okay, so this snake in David's hand is, as I said, the third cat snake species of the night. Um, and as you can see on the head, the head is green. And that tells you this is the very likable, um, quite pretty, very nice head shape, dark headed cat snake, Boiga nigriceps. Now this is considered one of the more uncommon cat snakes in Thailand, but I found that this spot, it is probably the most common one out of all of them, maybe second to Benkuluensis. 
but we are racking up the snakes tonight. Like this is just getting crazy at this point, considering we've hardly been out for any time at all. And we already have five species and, and we're finally seeing some nice proper Southern Thailand jungle species instead of like the same species we get around our house, which is what we've been seeing primarily so far. But uh, let me try and get some decent video. He's moving around a lot right now. Anyway, uh, very nice. Uh, I'm glad to be spotting stuff, even though I'm really tired after my ordeal the last two days. And uh, I'm going to help David grab some video. So literally as we are filming David's sequence, Moon, spotted this snake way up there. It's some kind of a hatiolar. I think it's fasciolata, but I can't actually make out from here. But man, we're just racking up the snakes tonight. It's going crazy. Haven't even been here a freaking hour. Okay, so here's a very impressive David Bowie's Huntsman spider. I know right now it just looks like a weird round ball of hair, like a load of caterpillars together. But yeah, uh, an iconic spider of this region, named after the singer David Bowie himself. The spiders from Mars Man. But uh, yeah, always nice to see these, very common in this area, but this is a big hairy one. Just spotted snake number seven of the night, and it's another Ahatilla fasciolata. You can see it's, uh, this one lacks the yellow of the other one. Or maybe it has a little sprinkling of cream. Its head's gone under the leaf though. We had a good look at one that was much more beautiful than this earlier. So uh, I'm gonna leave this one here. Probably show David just in case he wants to see. All right, after the uh, initial rush of species, we haven't seen a snake in probably like an hour and a half. Oh, I did just spot a gecko though. Certodactylus lepagulli, I think. Quite a big one. I don't know if you can see on camera, but these very pretty uh, banded bent toed geckos are all over the place here. I've seen a million of them tonight, but this is just a good one to show on cam. Okay, well, while we cut back to the road while doing some walking, and I just spotted our fourth cat snake, aka Boiga species of the night. This is Boiga benculuensis. Um, also, another extremely slender snake. Okay, so uh, now I've got this. Nice little Boiga benculuensis to calm down. We're hauling in the Boigas tonight. It's absolutely insane. We're finally getting that great southern diversity of snakes that we've been looking for. And uh, man, isn't this pretty? The pink bands, the green. It's so uh, such a nice snake. I'm gonna obviously uh, call David and probably take some photos of this. It's a pretty common species around here. I see them every now and again. Uh, probably equally as common as Boiga nigriceps, the one we found earlier. But man, I'm glad we finally found a snake and it was just crossing the road. How easy. Okay, so while still on the same pass of the road where we found the Benculoensis, I just spotted this uh, very common Parius CF Margaritaphorus. This right here though, even though this is incredibly common up uh, near where we live in the wetter areas, so you haven't seen it in my videos yet, um, the ones down here are almost certainly a different cryptic species. The ones down here have an orange collar, whereas the ones up where, I, where we live in Hua Hin in the west there have a uh, yellow collar. Uh, I'll probably take a couple pictures of this one because uh, I could do with some updated pictures of a southern yellow collar one, but it was just cruising in this drainage ditch, pretty much the easiest place you could find a snake. Okay, so while me and Cass were catching those two final snakes, David caught this lovely little striped morph Lycodon subannulatus, previously Dryocalamus subannulatus. These are very beautiful. The striped morph is definitely the dominant variety occurring in Prang, but I have seen the banded morph at this location multiple times too. But uh, we're absolutely shattered. My flash is out, so I could hardly photograph any of the snakes tonight. Um, but a lot of these I got good pictures of already because they're pretty common in this area. So yeah. Look at this guy here. I don't know what he's eating, but he's found something in this person's bike. Anyway, day two of the uh, third video for the channel. As you can see, um, swelling gone down quite a bit on my hand. So I'll be able to do another long night. Didn't stop me from being out till 4 a.m. last night on that very productive evening. But tonight we've driven a bit more further south uh, near the Malaysian border. There's some very exciting things that can be found here. And I'm optimistic we can get something cool. It's pretty as well. Okay, very, very quickly within what, five minutes of the start of the night, we split up to go around the, the lake and David found this, our fifth cat snake species in the last two nights. This one is obviously the 
the iconic mangrove cat snake, Ouiga dendrophila. All right, here you go. Here's a better look at this mangrove cat snake. As I was saying, these can be very common in certain biotopes in Thailand, but in these kind of like very tropical southern forests, let's say they're like nowhere near as common as they can be in other places. They show up now and again. But of course the habitat is great here with this big lake. So this species is semi-aquatic. But yeah, cool start for tonight. Let's uh, see what else we can find. Well, after about four hours of walking, we just got our second snake of the night. It's another mangrove snake, but this time about, well, like a fifth of the size of the last one. Okay, we actually did realize that it has the orange bands on the tail and uh, we actually need to photograph this for reasons. So I took it out of this little bush and decided I'd bring it back to the house. Are you gonna bite me? I don't think so. Juveniles usually very calm and very, very cute. Okay, so what I have here is the coolest find of the night. Uh, Cass actually spotted this earlier, told me there was a big gecko in the roof. I assumed it was a toke, but then I went down and I heard the call of Smith's giant gecko. And up to this point, I'd never seen one before in Thailand. And I still hadn't seen one until I went back to that hut a few minutes ago and caught this guy here. Now, this is the second largest gecko in Thailand after the toke, but it's a bit more slender, you can see. And this one has a nice unregenerated tail. And uh, I think this is maybe a slightly more like plain colored one than usual because it's been living on the walls of some hut. But uh, yeah, the common name is often Smith's green-eyed gecko. You can see that here. Very nice. Holy Look at the size of this. I guess it's a spiny turtle, right? Here's Semispinosa. It's got the like serrated... Is his. Look at its claws. Wow, that thing is insane. It's just been eating this grass shit here. I'd be careful with that if I were you. Why? It's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> I am officially defeated. I don't think I can hurt harder than I have tonight, particularly in that last like hour and a half, two hours there. That was like full 100% concentration, focus, looking at every single microhabitat I could look at and I just cannot find a snake. This has been rather disastrous. I don't know when I'm going to pick this video up. Um, if we make a stop before we get back to Hua Hin, then I'll pick it up then. If not, then this will be the end and you'll catch me in the next video. All right, peace. All right, but yes, we have taken a stop on the way back at one of my old haunt locations from uh, when I lived in Southern Thailand. One of the most consistent locations for finding cool and interesting stuff. Um, it's raining a bit too, not too heavy, just a bit of drizzle. Uh, so we're going to do a mix of road cruising and walking. I'll let you know what we find. Okay, so driving back from our uh, restaurant to the place, it's just rained and we spotted a snake on the road and it's actually, well, I'd good say snake. a good snake. Yeah, it's a juvenile Puiga Sandon and six out of all seven cat snake species. We None of us have our torches though, so I'm going to film it later. All right, guys, so here's a look at this juvenile dog tooth cat snake. I know, ridiculous name. Three animals in its name, but man, are these cool. This is literally the first one of these I've seen since 2015, I believe. I got a couple. They just like dropped off the face of the earth. like. They're still around, of course, but they rarely pop up on Facebook anymore. Like, people just don't seem to really be finding them much anymore. So it's always a very special snake to find. And for anyone that doesn't know, these are literally one of the largest colubrid snakes in the world. Um, records often put them towards three meters, but I know for a fact uh, they can grow over three meters in length, which I've seen a few times myself. But uh, they're always very slender, you know, with that nice coffin-shaped head. My talking is going to be so bad since I'm so tired, but... Alright, so, long story short, spotted this guy way up a tree, David climbed the tree, and now we have ourselves a Wallace's flying frog.
Racophorus nigropalmatus, which is an iconic species in Southeast Asia, one of the most sought after frogs for people that come here. And surprisingly, not that common. I've never seen them in this area before, but we had a rain shower tonight and he was just sitting way up a tree. Probably the coolest frog we get in this area as well, unless you're a fan of the Philoderma, but this one's still quite small. I'd say they get double the size of this. Second snake of the night, Ahitula prasina, the ubiquitous snake of Southern Thailand, leaving that one firmly in the city. All right, so we've reached the end of the pathway to Prasina, and that's signed on from the road earlier, but we're about to check out one of my favorite caves in Southern Thailand. Last time we went to this one, we got three Ridley eye. Might have been four, but uh, it'd be so nice to see Ridley eye. They are some of the coolest snakes. Now here's a sight for sore eyes. Ridley eye using the uh, using the old the old lights of the cave for the locomotion. Ooh, twitchy. There you go. Ridley's cave racer, Alafi Tanieris Ridleyi. The ones in this cave have such a nice bluish head and, and yellowish on the anterior. I actually prefer the like white morph, but it's still nice to see these. Definitely one of the prettiest snakes in the region. I'm such a fan of rat snakes. I love snakes that change color, like from the head to tail. That's one of my favorite features in reptiles. So I love these guys. Another vine snake, this time a different species. We showed this one earlier in the trip in Krabi. This is a Hetala mcterazans, the Malayan vine snake. You can tell the lime green shade is different. It overexposes less and it's got a much nicer head shape. The nice in city. One of the lizard eating species searching for gecko eggs in the holes in this, in this pillar. We saw one of these in Trang obviously, but I wasn't actually there when it was seen, so. But another striped morph, which is certainly like the dominant morph in this area. Got a Carinatus here. Nice, pretty banded one. Not as orange as the one we saw in Trang, but it has some orange on the head. Another very common species, but one to add to the species count for the night, which is, again, tallying up a bit. Just got a snake on the road, on the way over to the waterfall we're heading to. You guys know this snake, we've seen it already. This is the southern Parius margaritophorus, which always have the orange color. Anyway, very common snake. Let's flick this boss off the road. All right, I just spotted a cool snake, one that I haven't seen oh, in, I don't know when the last time I saw one of these was, 2015 maybe? This is a juvenile white-bellied rat snake. Absolutely beautiful. We're going to get it down because I'm filming at a weird angle. All right, so take a look at this. This stunning snake is one I have not seen in so many years. And juveniles are a lot harder to come by than adults in my experience. I've never properly photographed a juvenile. So this incredible snake is a very welcome find. Now, as I said earlier, I love snakes whose like pattern changes down their body. And I just love how it goes from that olivey green to banding and then to like this interesting brown and yellow striped tail. Just really an incredible snake and these get huge as well. And uh, yeah, this is, this is one of the snakes that I'm, one of the most happy I've been to find a snake on this trip. What a beautiful animal, man. We're seeing some nice tropical snakes. My finger is still swollen, but a lot better today. All right, well, we're gonna uh, take some pictures of this one and then set it back. All right, so we found one more slug snake at the waterfall, but my phone died, so I'm using Cass's now. But I just spotted a uh, new snake for the channel. I think it's Homolopsis semi-zonata. Well, it almost certainly is. Just in those reeds there. We'll see if we can get it out. If not, this is the only video you're going to see. Okay, so after seeing another four more of these, I managed to get my hands on this pretty little juvenile. The juveniles always have these very strong bands whereas the adults well the adults can still have nice orange bands but they're usually a bit broader and a bit fainter some large individuals can have like almost no banding at all not sure how big these get but it's nice to show another new snake for the night and get a look at one of the homolopsidae here in thailand i think the first one 
my first homolopsidae I've found since I've been here. So yeah, I'm probably gonna shoot a couple pictures of this one. These are usually quite easy to photograph. All right, covered in sweat, tired, after 3 a.m. in the morning. I think that's where we're gonna wrap up this Southern Thailand video. So this was the all the post bite. Overall, pretty good species count. Um, I'm sure it'll be an interesting video. A lot of stuff, a lot of interesting Southern tropical snakes. But uh, yeah, for now, I'm completely done and I'll pick this back up when we're back in Hua Hin.